All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat back there in the Philippines. And of course, please make sure bago tayo magsimula ay nakasubscribe na po kayo sa ating YouTube channel. You are following our Facebook page. And of course, you also see the rest of our social media accounts on your screen. Now, before we go to anything else, so before we start with anything else, of course, we'd have to start with our opening prayer. This has been still... Uh, prepared for us by Pastor Efren Esteban. So, samahan niyo po ako sa ating opening prayer. Let us pray. Eternal and Father of all, thank you for today for the ways in which you bless our lives and provide our daily needs. Today, as we come together in this place to learn and increase our knowledge, may you be with us, dear God, to understand our goals in life, to execute our priorities, and to become consistent in what we are doing. You are truly a big help for us to reach our dreams. Yes, Lord. May the presence of the Holy Spirit inspire us as we listen and write today. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, that through Him we have hope and dreams alive. May you hear all these prayers and petitions, O loving Father. In the sweetest name of Jesus, we ask all these things. Amen. Amen. All right, so again, maraming salamat, Pastor Efren, for preparing our Opening and closing prayer. Nanibago tayo kay Pastor, ha? English speaking ngayon si Pastor. Okay, so again, we are back for our general education discussion. Ito po yung mga items na sinagutan ninyo, no? Um, remember, I'm always posting your questions at 7 a.m. Saturday. Okay, 7 a.m. po ng Saturday. Nakapost na po yung inyong general education uh, questions and of, of course also your professional education quizzes. Okay, that's going to be or that's always posted on your Google Classroom. Meron na po tayong apat na Google Classroom. Kung hindi ka pa member ng ating Google Classroom, may wala ka pa sa ating four sections, make sure that after watching this live stream is you go to our Facebook page and you try to check all the details that we have there. Now again, all exclusive materials would go straight to grow. Grow po, again, is Guru Pinoy Review Online Workgroup. If you don't know what Grow is, this is our exclusive FB group where we send all the exclusive materials that we have, those things that we are discussing in our live stream and also some other pertinent materials. Okay, so this is where you can find all things that you can download, all things that you can print for general education and professional education that is in Grow. Now, it is very cheap and it's very easy to become a member of Grow. All you need to do is to pay 500 pesos. That's a one-time payment until the day that you take the let. If you're not taking the let in, in March of 2021, if you're taking it in September, or maybe you are taking it in the future, If uh, because I know some of you are just, um, some people are sending us messages that they're just, fourth year college students, third year college students, you can still continue using your GROW membership, okay? There is no limit to it. You can start now even if you are just a third year student, okay? Third year college student. Po, pwede na po kayo mag-start ng, ng membership niyo ng GROW. That's only 500 pesos. That's a one-time payment until the day that you take the let. Now, all the details can be found on your screen. You may pay through Palawan, Cebuana ML. You can also send us a super chat or super stickers through our live streams on YouTube and all the things that you need for paying us can be found on your screen. Now, right after paying us, make sure that you send a copy or a picture of your receipt through a private message. Again, a private message po, huwag niyo pong i-comment and send that to our Facebook page. And then, of course, we are going to add you to grow. Okay, so again, that's a one-time payment. That's not monthly. You don't need to renew your membership even if you are going to take the let in the future, you can already start reviewing with us. This is the cheapest that you have um, um, in the Philippines now as a review program for general education, professional education. Again, your 500 pesos one-time payment, this is 50% discounted na po yan. Now, um, 
we also have an offer today all right now we we still have an offer that's all in one enrollment that's for genet profit and majoring if you have a majorship now if you have if you are a bs ed graduate that's only 850 pesos again that's only 850 pesos the majoring that we are opening uh we we are offering right now are english math bio and social science okay if you are going to just uh review for the major again that's only going to be 500 if you are only going to pay for gen and profit it's only going to be 500 you put them together of course that makes a thousand but still we are giving you um some discount you only need to pay 850 that's all in one enrollment okay the the details can be found on your screen again the same details palawan lbc sabuana ml there is also an option for you to send us your payment through metro bank there is even gumro there's even paypal Okay, you can find that in our Facebook page. Okay, so make sure that you also follow our Facebook page because most of the updates that we have, we post on our Facebook page. Okay, so again, that's unlimited international online let review until the day you take the let, one time payment only. Now, it is very important for you to note that your 850 pesos offer is only until the end of this month. Okay, today that's already, it's already November 28th. So that means you only have tomorrow and Monday to pay your 850 pesos for you to get Gen Ed Profit and Majorship uh, review. Okay, so again, those are our offers okay now uh for your majorship again we're offering math for now social science biology and english on your screens right now you can see all of the coaches that you have and again i'm vouching for these coaches i know their capacities i know their expertise and they have all been our coaches um ever since we've had our our we've had our review center so even if we were just a uh, study link review and tutorial center in ilo ilo these were already our coaches so i know 100 percent that they are going to do everything in their power in their will to make you pass the let okay to help you pass the let they they know everything that they need to to uh teach you and uh for you to be able to pass the lip now again your majorship for those of you who are asking the majorship discussions are not going to be live so those people who haven't uh become a member of our majorship groups our classrooms for majorship they won't be able to see our videos for our discussion not only the videos but our, you are also going to be receiving the soft copy of all the questions okay so prior to the discussion the soft copy of the sets that you are going to answer for that weekend is going to be posted in your google classroom then of course that is going to be discussed by your coach your discussion again is not going to be live that is going to be exclusive for our google classroom members okay so again that's only 500 pesos for your majorship if you're a math major bio major soc sci or english major and if you also would want to avail the gen ed and prof ed discussions and the gen ed prof ed um soft copy that we have the the materials that we have through grow now you can just pay 850 again that's all in but that's only until the end of this month okay that's november 30th then um we are going back to our original price okay now again if your um if your majorship is still not offered please go to guru pinoy let online group and uh, uh answer the poll there there's going to be a poll for the rest of the majorship again please do answer the poll so that we can make our decision on how we can help you pass it whether we are going to open another major or not okay so again please do answer the poll gamitin po yung poll wag po yung i-comment ang inyong majorship mag-click lang po kayo dyan kung nasaan po dyan yung inyong major all right now another thing that we are looking forward to is your mid review exam that's going to be on december 12th and 13th there's going to be cash prices but again this is all exclusive for our grow members so again this is just for our growers your cash prices can be found on your screen so if you ranked one that's our first that's going to be three thousand cash plus 2,000 gift certificates for top two that's 2,000 cash then 1,500 gift certificates top three that's 1,000 1,000 cash and 1,000 gift certificates and again top four until top 10 you also have 500 pesos worth of gift certificates so again this is going to be on the 12th and 13th of December but this is all exclusive for our growers so again make sure that you become a member of grow you are not going to lose anything 500 pesos is very cheap and of course we do everything that we can to make uh to help you pass the let 
Now, another thing that we are all very excited about is our online Christmas party, our first ever online Christmas party that's going to be on December 20th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. PH time, okay? This is Philippine time. It's going to be through Zoom so that we can all see each other. Now, these are the different contests that we have. We are going to have the virtual Christmas slideshow. The virtual Christmas slideshow, I'm just going to be asking you to uh, send me a video of you, short clip, or maybe a picture with your Christmas attire, and I'm going to make a slideshow of all the students that we have, okay? So, if you want to be part of our Christmas slideshow, again, just send me a picture of you in your Christmas attire, okay? I'm going to be posting more details on this later. Now, we also have uh, the rest of our contest there. The first one is Christmas Choral. This is, of course, a singing competition. Now, I will be... Uh, telling you how to join our Christmas choral later, okay? This is a group singing competition. Your Once Upon a Christmas is a group storytelling or skip, okay? This is also, of course, a contest. Now, of course, the our highlight is going to be Mass Christmas, okay? Mass Christmas, that's going to be Macho Gay, okay? So this is Mass Christmas Gurung Pinoy 2020. And so again, I will be posting the mechanics, all the criteria of this later. Now we are also going to have, of course, a raffle draw and only those people who have joined in our teams can be um, can, can become a uh, competitor in our raffle draw, okay? You cannot join the raffle draw in the drawing if you uh, have not participated in our teams, okay? So again, please be a member of the team. Please join our Christmas party. This for fun, and of course, some of you might be able to also earn some money through this. Now, um, prior to this, no, yung ating Christmas party, sabihin ko lamang po, meron na tayong post nyan, okay? We have a post here in our, um, sa Gurung Pinoy po na Facebook page, meron po tayong event dyan. Now, all you need to do is to, to open the event, and dun po sa event, meron po tayong discussion, okay? So, this is a discussion. I said comment join to be assigned in a group. The deadline for that for joining is on December 4, 7 p.m. page time. Okay, so all you need to do is to comment here. I-click nyo po yung ating event, tapos mag-comment po kayo para po malagay po kayo sa, sa inyong groups, okay? So, I will be forming your groups. So, make sure that you comment there para po makasali kayo sa ating groups, all right? So that is, again, for our Christmas party. Okay, now another thing, of course, our schedules for our live streams this month, and it might also be the same for the following month, it's still 7.30 p.m. PH time, that's 6.30 a.m. dito po sa South Carolina. Saturday, we are going to discuss your general education. And Sunday, we are discussing professional education. Now, again, at 7 a.m. PH time on Saturday, I am posting your quizzes for Gen Ed and Prof Ed. Now, some of you are sometimes lost as to where you can find the quiz. Again, whenever you would want to answer the quiz for our quizzes, all you need to do is to go back to your Gmail. So again, kailangan nyo po yung Gmail natin. Kailangan nyo po magkaroon ng Gmail para maka-join po kayo sa ating classroom. So all you need to do is go back to your Gmail at hanapin nyo po itong uh, dots na to, itong nine dots na to. And you try to find your classroom there. Okay, so hanapin nyo yung classroom nyo dito. Once you see the classroom, oh, nasa mo yung classroom? Uh, now, some of you, yung mga medyo techy na, no, yung ating mga millennials, eh, nag-download po sila ng Google Classroom na app. Okay? You can also do that. Okay, so you find your Google Classroom, and of course, you can see all the classrooms that you have joined there through Guru Pinoy, no, meron po tayong different classrooms. So again, we already have four uh, sections for Janet and Profit. You just click on that. Once you click on your classroom, you can see the link to your quizzes. Wala na po tayong code, diretso na po yan. Okay, so just click the link, then uh, that is going to uh, bring you straight to your quizzes. Okay, so again, it can be mobile link or web link, pareho lang naman po yung lam laman na questions dyan. Okay, so again, your Gen Ed and your Prof Ed are posted in your Google Classroom at 7 a.m. Uh, PH time, so make sure that you answer them, especially yung Gen Ed nyo. You only have until 7 p.m. on Saturday to answer your Gen Ed. You have until 7 p.m. on Sunday to answer your Prof Ed. Okay, now again, we also have our uh, major ship classroom. So again, this is where you'll be able to find all the materials that you find. Okay, that that you need for your major ship and also your discussion. Okay, so that again is for our 
um, Janet and Prof Ed for all the quizzes that we have. Now, Gurung Pinoy also has launched its app. So if you still do not have our app, please go to our Facebook page. We also have our details for that. It's very easy for you to have our app. Just download it. And once you've downloaded it, it's very easy for you to keep track of all the things that we're posting. The Did you know that? Yung mga trivia natin na pinupost, especially the videos that we have, your MASH, your science snippets, all the things that can help you pass the let can be found in, also in our app. So if you still don't have our app, then go ahead and launch our app or download our app, okay? But for tonight, of course, our main goal is to discuss your general education. Okay, so punta na po tayo sa ating discussion. Again, we will be discussing your general education items tonight and we will know after this kung sino nga ba yung mga top notchers natin. Again, all our materials can be downloaded. A soft copy of this can be found in Grow right after our live discussion. Okay, now good evening sa lahat-lahat. Again, if you're watching us through YouTube, go ahead and please... Um, like our video and on youtube again please do like our video on youtube uh sir arthur ibaok he's asking something on on youtube he asked good evening ma Mac. how about sa laptop pwede po ba yun ma-download hindi po siya po pwedeng ma-download kasi cellphone app po siya okay so makikita nyo po siya sa sa ating um cell phone okay so just go to your facebook page of gurung pinoy at makikita nyo po dun yung link to our apps Okay, good evening po. Ma'am Jeneline Silva on YouTube, we'd like to welcome you. Sabi niya, good evening, ma'am. First time to comment, but always, okay. So she's always watching our videos, but I think first time nga niyang mag, uh, first time niyang mag-join sa ating live stream. Okay, so again, maraming salamat po for all those people who've already liked our video in YouTube. Again, if you're watching us on YouTube, please do like our video. And of course, Ma'am Joy Dairit, sa ating midwife, maraming salamat sa iyong maagang pakape. Hindi pa ako nagkakape, no? Hindi pa po ako nagkakape. Nihintay ko pa yung aking coffee from Mr. Manaay. And for those people who are watching us on Facebook, maraming salamat po for watching. Okay, Sir Joseph. Gila Concha on Facebook says, Ma'am, pwede ma-share ang app para ma-download ko? Di ko na abutan kasi. Uh, let's wait for Sir Ram, for Sir Migs, my, my husband. I will be asking him to share the link of the app. Okay, so para po uh, mas madali na sa inyo. Sir Sean Anthony Larazi, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Again, if you're watching us on Facebook, please do share our video. Please start a watch party, tag your friends, share it on your Facebook account, share it on all the groups that you've joined so that we can reach out to more people and we can help them pass the lead. Good evening, Paul. Uh, watching from Astoria Plaza, Sir Alvin Santiago. Wow, napaka social naman ni Sir Alvin. Good evening, watching from Pagalungan, Magindanao. Magindanao. Ma'am Samrida Alim Pauto. Good evening po, ma'am. Thank you for starting a watch party. Again, please do start a watch party. Uh, okay, mag-start po kayo ng inyong watch party. And of course, please do share our video, react to our video. Sir Boy at Masangid on Facebook says, alam na naman ang dahilan bakit magbaback out dahil may ambagan. Wala naman yata magiging ambagan. Oh, wag, kayo mag, wag na kayo mag-ambagan for your Christmas party. Okay, o, hindi nyo po kailangan mag-ambagan. Ma'am Vils, law for Bolok-Bolok, maraming salamat po for, for tagging your friends. Thank you. Okay, again, please do react to our video and please do share our video. Start a watch party, tag your friends. Maraming salamat. Ma'am Athena, Cosico de Guzman. Hi, Coach Mac. Super galing niyo po. Dami ko natututunan. Every night, nagmamarathon po ako ng vids niyo. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Athena. Good evening from Occidental Mindoro, Ma Maria Albi Advincula. Good evening po. First time to join, Ma'am J.D. Santos. Pero always ko po pinapanood YouTube videos. Maraming salamat po, ma'am, and welcome po. All right, so again, please go ahead and like our video on YouTube. And of course, please do react to our video. If you're watching us on Facebook, share our video, tag your friends, start a watch party, Ma'am Bill. Bulok Bulok, maraming salamat po for sharing our video. Ma'am Athena Guzman, or Di Guzman, maraming salamat po. All the way from Island Pinang, Pinang, Malaysia, 
Ma'am Sailila Noraima. Good evening po. Good evening po, Ma'am uh, Sailila or Sailila. Okay, so marami salamat po for all those people who are watching. Hindi ko na po isa-isahing basahin yung mga uh, inyong mga comments. No? About sa Google Classroom, this is from Ma'am Jelin May Catalunya. Ma'am Mek, maka-avail ka lang po ba if member ka ng GROW? Good evening. Yung Google Classroom po ninyo for your Gen Ed and Profit, libre po siya. Po, pwede po ninyong uh, ma-avail yun. Po, pwede po kayo maging member ng ating Google Classroom for Gen Ed and Prof Ed so that you can answer your quizzes for general education and professional education. Libre po yung inyong uh, Gen Ed and Prof Ed. So all you need to do is to click in, on our link. Uh, let me check your quizzes. Sa ating classroom, yung ating pong uh, last section, no, yung uh, section 4 natin, eh, meron pa lamang tayong 57 students. So, po, pwede po po tayong humabol sa ating um, section 4. So, again, that's libre po. First timers, sa ating mga first timers, welcome po sa inyong lahat. I can see the first timers here commenting sa YouTube. Sir Limuel de la Cruz, maraming salamat po. Welcome po. Ma Monica de la Cruz, first timer din. Finally, nakahabol. Di na po puro replay. Maraming salamat po. Ganun din si Sir Oliver Mohar, first time din niya. Maraming salamat sa ating first timers. And of course, we welcome all of you. Mababait po yung mga nasa team YouTube natin. Ganun din po sa ating team Facebook. Hindi po sila nangangagat. Okay, so enjoy po kayo dyan. And uh, mga... Uh, jokers po yung mga yan. Okay, so I, I know and I hope that you are going to have fun while you are answering and while we are having our discussion. Ganun din sa ating isa pang first timer, Ma'am Saye Oriel. Okay, first time niyang makilive sa YouTube from Camarina Sur. Sana po soon available na yung AFA major. Okay, now, okay, welcome daw sa first timer, sabi ni uh, Ma'am Christine Acabo. Ba, mababa ito sila at tahimik. Hindi kami member ng GROW, sabi ni Sir Limuel de la Cruz. Makaka-join po ba kami sa December 12? Yung December 12 po natin ay exclusive po for our growers. So yung yung contest po, yung competition mid-review, yung papremyo ay exclusive po sa ating growers. But of course, the discussion can also be found through our live stream. So ila-live stream po pa rin po yung ating discussion. But of course, it is very important and it's more uh, practical po for you to become a member of GROW dahil hindi na po kayo mag-take down ng notes. Hindi hindi po kayo magsisisi. Lahat po ng mga materials natin naka-upload na po doon. Okay? So it's just 500 pesos. That's one-time payment. Wala po siyang limit. At then, hindi po siya monthly payment. Uh, watching from Al Ain, Al Ain Abu Dhabi, UAE, Ma'am Ophelia Samson, maraming salamat po. Good, good afternoon yata kina ma'am. Kain tayo, sabi ni Sir Edgar Peralta. On YouTube, okay, hinihintay ko pa po yung aking kape. Sir Ram, Sir Migs, if you're watching, my coffee please. Thank you so much. And they're asking that you um, you you post the, the link to your apps, okay, to your app. Paano po mag-join sa Google Classroom? Meron po tayong nakapost dyan sa ating uh, Facebook page. Balikan nyo po later, Ma'am J.D. Santos. Alright, so we start. Again, please do like our video. If you're watching us on YouTube, please react to our video. Start a watch party. Share our video if you're watching us on, on Facebook. And also, you, you may also tag your friends. Alright, so again, maraming salamat po for all our first timers. Welcome po. And we start with our general education. Now, all those of you who were not able to answer your quizzes, again, these are the same items that we are discussing today. So again, please do make sure that you are listening intently to our discussion so that you can learn. And of course, please try to remember all these items because these are actual items and these are items that you may find in your lab. All right, we start with question number one. The Filipinos are deeply religious. We know that this is true. However, sometimes this religiosity instills the negative attitude of what? Okay, what are something or what's something that's negative that we sometimes would get from being too religious? Is it letter A, total surrender to God in times of helplessness is best? Letter B, God who is omnipotent and omniscient will allow what is best? Letter C, res resignation and ends up into doing nothing to improve one's condition? Or letter D, social responsibility to participate in the development of the society? What was your answer for question number one? Question number one, okay. On YouTube, I can see letter C. 
what about here on Facebook? Sir Migs Manaay, hi. Thank you for watching. Please uh, give me some coffee. Maraming salamat, Sir Migs. And of course, they're asking that you uh, post your app link. Yung link sa app. Maraming salamat. Uh, Ma'am Sir Annie Hapas, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Okay, now people, most of the people on YouTube are answering letter C. Okay, so uh, si Sir Oliver Mohar on YouTube says, Ma'am, blind po ako. Maglilet din po ako, matagal na po ako. Uh, I'm not sure po, sir, kung ano po yung provisions nila, for, uh, kung ano po yung uh, special conditions na binibigay nila sa blind. You might have to, to ask the PRC po. Okay, but we welcome, of course, uh, Sir Oliver Mohar. Ma'am Analim Penamente, maraming salamat for starting a watch party. Ganon din si Ma'am Samraida Alim Pauto. Sir Boyet Masangid says, the power of C. Okay, now again, of course, letter C is the correct answer for number one. Okay, letter C is our answer for number one. Again, resignation and ends up into doing nothing to improve one's condition. Okay, so wala ka nang ginagawa sa buhay mo. Wala na tayong ginagawa to improve our lives dahil sabi natin lahat naman na tulong ay isisend ng Panginoon. No? So sabi nga natin, eh, nasa Diyos ang awa pero dapat eh, nasa tao ang gawa. So hindi po pwedeng nagre-resign ka na lang. Hindi po pwedeng wala ka na lang gagawin. Maghihintay ka na lang sa tulong ng, ng Diyos. Okay, so that is one negative attitude to that we get from being too religious all right so letter c tama po kayo that would be the correct answer for question number one now we go to number two what do you call a story that was put together through an exchange of letters okay what kind of literature is this is this letter a classic letter b fiction letter c epistolary or letter d uh episodic okay what's your answer for Question number two. Okay, now my husband, Sir Migs Manay, has just shared, has just uh, commented the link to the app. And dyan na po sa inyong, sa inyong chat na makikita sa Facebook. Okay, so you can just click on the link po and you can download the app. Good evening, ma'am. Ask ko lang po sana kung bakit hindi na po ako member ng GROW. Last time po, pinag-approve niyo ako membership, but now I check. Okay, there might be, uh, there might have been some mistake, ma'am Rose Ann. I will check po later. Okay, ma'am Rose Ann, please do send me, uh, send us a private message po through our Facebook page para ma-check po natin later. Ma'am Rose Ann Echage. Mag-send po kayo ng, ng message sa ating Facebook page. Uh, Sir Mark Hill Hiyangan, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Power of C again, sabi ni Sir Boye. Okay, so again, we are already at question number two. Ma'am Rose Ann Echage, I've just read your, your message. Uh, please send us a private message po through our Facebook page. Okay, so again, your question here, a story put together through an exchange of letter is called blank literature. And of course, the correct answer here would be letter C pa rin. That's epistolary, not classic. When you say classic literature, you know, these are the stories that we have from the past. Okay, so classic siya, meaning is old story siya, okay? Old book siya, old novel siya. Fiction, you know this to be a type of story which is not true to life. Okay, so fiction, Chinese, true to life. Episodic, now you, this means you have different episodes. Para siyang ang probinsyano, okay, ang nakaraan. And then it is going to, to have different episodes. So again, that's episodic. Letter C, epistolary is the correct answer. Let's try to take a look at the next slide. An epistolary novel is a novel written as a series of documents. The usual form is letters, although diary entries, newspaper clippings, and other documents are sometimes used. Recently, electronic documents such as recordings and radio. So yung mga blogs, no? Blogs, saka vlogs po pwede na din. And emails have also come into use. The word epistolary is derived from Latin, from the Greek word. Okay, so that's the Greek word, epistoli, meaning a letter. Okay, so letter po, 
that's why uh, the correct answer is letter C, epistolary. Okay, so um, I think well, it is right for us to to say that the diary of Anne Frank, not the novel, which is a title, the diary of Anne Frank, is an epistolary novel. Okay, because it has been or taken from the diary entries that she has. Okay, so epistolary again, that's the correct answer for number two, and that was letter C. Now we go to number three, a Filipino writer whose stories and poems depict Filipino Spanish cultural beliefs and traditions. Who is this? Is it letter A, Nick Joaquin? Letter B, NVM Gonzalez? Letter C, Bienvenido Santos? Or letter D, Edelberto Tiempo? Who's your answer for number three? Okay, sino po yung answer nyo for number three? Ma Marjorie Gumimao? Maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Again, please do react to our video and share our video. Start a watch party. Tag your friends if you're watching us on Facebook. Okay, now most people on YouTube are answering letter A. Okay, dito sa YouTube, uh, sa Facebook, I mean, ganun din. Most of them are answering letter A. And of course, letter A, that's the correct answer that we have. Okay, so Nick Joaquin was the Filipino writer whose stories and poems depict Filipino-Spanish cultural beliefs and traditions. Let's take a look at the different slides that we have here. Okay, so this is Lolo Nick Joaquin. He is known as the People's Writer. And his first story, titled The Sorrows of Vaudeville, in 1937 was published by the Sunday Tribune. Okay, he worked as a journalist. He was a pioneer of literary journalism. Okay, so this is Nick Joaquin, the people's writer, and of course that was the correct answer that we have. Now when you say literary journalism, this is the, the report no, of actual events that employs literary techniques. He used the pen name Quejano de Manila in some of his works. Okay, so that's his his pen name, Quejano de Manila. Again, this is Nick Joaquin. Okay, ang pogi, sabi ni Sir Jeffrey Arida on YouTube. All right, now, some other people that we have there, NVM Gonzalez is Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez. He was actually from Romblon, malapit na sa Iloilo. Now, he, reserved, uh, or he received a Rockefeller Foundation Fellowship, which allowed him to study in Stanford University and Columbia University. Okay, so he was a famed poet, story writer, essayist, professor, and recipient of different awards. Okay, so he's also gifted in terms of literature. That's NVM Gonzalez. Okay, so two years before his death, he was proclaimed as a national artist for literature. Some of his works include The Winds of April, A Season of Grace, The Bamboo Dancers, and his works have been published in different languages. Okay, so that's NVM Gonzalez. Um, in Grow, I have already posted all of these things, okay? So all the national artists have already been posted in Grow. So if you're a member of Grow, if you still have not seen that, please go ahead later, go to Grow. I have posted the national artists for literature, for painting, for uh, visual arts, for films, all those um, different, different criteria. Okay, now we also have Benvenido Santos. He was from Tondo, Manila. And uh, his genres were fiction and poetry. Okay, so Santos left for America in September 1941. He was one of the pensionados. That means a scholar of the Philippine Commonwealth government, 30 years old and an established short story writer in English at home. He enrolled at the University of Illinois or Illinois in the master's program in English. Okay, so NVM Gonzalez and even um, Benvenido Santos, they were, uh, they were, taught abroad, no? so they were educated abroad. Now, some of his works were The Volcano, Villa Magdalena, The Praying Man, The Man Who Thought He Looked Like Robert Taylor, and What the Hell For You Left Your Heart in San Francisco. Okay, so most of his work were in English because, of course, he was one of the pensionados that we've had. And the last one that we have there, letter D, this is Edelberto K. Tiempo. He was also a fiction writer, literary critic, and he reaped numerous honors for his writing. Most of his writings were published by New Day publishers. So some of these very important work that he had were uh, These Are To Be Free, Finalities, 
a prize-winning novel, The Standard Bearer, Rainbow for Rima, Snake Twin, and Other Stories, and Farah. Okay, so these are some work by Edelberto K. Tiempo. All right, so again, these were um, the names, no? These were some of the people that we had in the choices, but of course, the correct answer was Nick Joaquin. Nick Joaquin is the correct answer for question number three. Okay, now we go to number four. Number four, nothing happens. This is still category English. Nothing happens in this world by chance. It is all part of a grand design. The author speaks of one's blank. Okay, what's your answer for question number four? Marami salamat, sir, Mark Kinko, for starting, uh, for sharing our video. Marami salamat, sir, Migs Manay, for the kape. Kape po tayo. Kape and, ano to, sweet potato pudding. Thank you. Okay, what's your answer for number four? Okay, now most people on Facebook are answering letter D. Aba, may 101% sure pa si Sir, si President uh, Loreto Agbayani on YouTube. Okay, so 100% uh, sure da, 101% sure for letter D. Okay, the correct answer, of course, would be letter D. Letter D, that's destiny. Okay, so sabi ng number four mo, nothing happens in this world by chance. Hindi nangyayaring isang bagay dahil lamang sa, sa pagkakatao, no? chance lamang. It is all, all part of a grand design. So that means destiny mo siya, no? uh, kapalaran mo siya. So nasa destiny, nasa kapalaran mong mamit mo siya, na kayo'y magkatagpo, no? Pero na kayo din ay hindi maging magkatadhana, nasa destiny nyo din. So wag mo nang ipilit, no? Wag mo nang ipilit. Pag hindi talaga, eh wag na. Hayaan mo na lang. Eh. That means there is another person who is destined to be with you forever, okay? So that's destiny. Destiny po yan. Okay? So that's the correct answer. Letter D, destiny. Now, some of you are asking here sa YouTube kung paano po makapag-join. Later po, i-explain daw ni... Sir Loreto, okay, Sir Loreto is our president on YouTube. Nandiyan din po sina, uh, marami pa sila dyan, sina Ma'am Tin, sina Sir Jeffrey, no? si Ma'am Priscilla. So magtanong lang po kayo dyan sa ating YouTube uh, group, Team YouTube. Okay, now number five, Andrew approached the platform with his speech. His palms were sweaty and his hands were shaking. He felt the palpitations of his chest and perspiration began to appear at his forehead. Andrew is experiencing, this is a very common lab question in the general education. Okay, palagi itong nakikita sa ating gen ed. Is it nausea, uh, epilepsy, letter C, stage fright, or letter D, heart attack? Walang forever, sabi ni Sir Boyet Masanggid sa Facebook beater si Sir. Ma'am Ma Jenny or Sir Jenny, marami salamat po for starting a watch party. Ma'am Irene Aloro, marami salamat for watching with us. Good evening po, Ma'am Grace Jane Kupay. Okay, what's your answer for question number five? Work, work mode sa ngayon. Ulitin na lang bukas here. Shout out sa mga kaguro, kaguro and to you, Ma'am Mek. That's coming from Sir Midgeri Balatanto Dionos. Na sa work pa si Sir. All right, now many of you are answering letter C sa YouTube. Ganon din dito sa Facebook. Okay, so again, of course, this is letter C, stage fright, okay? So again, this is a very common left question. So dapat alam niyo ng sagot dito, no? So uh, he approached the platform with his speech. His palms were sweaty and his hands were shaking. He felt the palpitation of his chest, okay? So malakas yung kaba niya, no? Malakas yung, yung dabog, no? Yung, yung kabog na kanyang dibdib. And of course, he was very sweaty. Okay, so pina, pinagpapawisan siya. And of course, this is stage fright. When you say nausea, nausea naman of course is this is pagkahilo. So this usually would happen if you're pregnant. Okay, so nausea. Epilepsy, of course, you know this. Um, 
ano ano nga to sa sa Tagalog ano sa Filipino yung yung epilepsy okay of course you know this to be a condition no, where where a person would have seizures okay so may seizure siya heart attack of course this is cardiac arrest alam naman natin kung ano ibig sabihin ng ng heart attack now one thing for you to to avoid having stage fright if you are an adult already if you are going to to give some presentations right after passing the let for example eh apply na kayo na mag apply na kayo sa sa DepEd of course for you to be able to to overcome your stage fright uh, I would suggest I would um tell you that you you need to practice in front of the mirror so tingnan niyo yung sarili niyo sa front of the mirror no uh, practice kayo in front of the mirror you may also record yourself at pakinggan niyo yung inyong sarili i have some tips on how to to pass your depth and interview meron po tayong actual interview questions don and actual answers that you can give them meron na po tayong uh, video na yan sa ating youtube channel okay meron po tayong uh, video that can help you to to grab the chance to become a teacher in DepEd. Okay, so balikan nyo po yan right after pumasa kayo sa LET. Of course, we know that you are all going to pass the LET. Okay, so again, this is stage fright. Now, number six, who is the proponent of the arena theater? Is it letter A, Tino, letter B, Carpio, letter C, Avellana, or letter D, Montano? What is your answer for question number six? All these people, of course, are um were involved in the theater in the Philippine theater pero sino yung tinatawag nating proponent talaga ng arena theater siya yung nagsimula ng arena theater now many people on youtube are answering letter d okay ganun din dito sa facebook your answer most of your answer is also letter d you're saying that that's montano Okay, Montano for number six, and that would be the correct answer. Okay, so number six, letter D, is the correct answer. That's Montano. Let's take a look at our slide. So again, as I've mentioned, all these people were uh, involved in the Philippine theater. Okay, so that's why, okay, so sabi ni Ma'am Wendelin Sario dito, meron tayong tinatawag na Montano Arena. Montano Arena. Okay, now Severino Montano was a playwright, director, actor, and theater theater organizer, and he was a forerunner in institutionalizing legitimate theater in the Philippines. Taking up courses and graduate degrees abroad, he honed and shared his expertise with his countrymates. Okay, so he was actually one of the national artists for theater. Okay, so that's Severino Montano. Now, this is Daisy H. Avellana, an actor, director, and writer born in Roja City, Capiz. She elevated legitimate theater and dramatic arts to a new level of excellence by staging and performing in breakthrough productions of classic Filipino and foreign plays and by encouraging the establishment of performing groups and the professionalization of Filipino theater. He was actually, or she was married, and together with her husband, Lamberto Avellana, and other artists, she co-founded the Barangay Theater Guild. Okay, so Barangay Theater Guild, ito naman yung kay Avellana, which, which paved the way for the popularization of theater and dramatic arts in the country, utilizing radio and television. Okay, so um, yung ating answer, of course, would be Montano. Montano po. Hindi po si Carla Avellana, ha? Sir Jeffrey Arida. It is not Carla Avellana. Okay? So the correct answer, of course, would be uh, Montano. All right. Now we go to number seven. Number seven na po tayo. The figure of speech, sturdy and strong. The Filipinos are like the Mulabe. Is blank. Is this an irony? Letter B, metaphor. Letter C, hyperbole. Or letter D, simile. Okay, what's your answer for question number seven? All right, now most people on YouTube are answering letter D. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mom Lenny Sanchez, thank you for sharing our video. Okay, 
So many of you are answering letter D for question number seven. Of course, this is the correct answer. Simili po yung tamang sagot for question number seven natin because there is the term like. Remember, if there are terms like or as, if you are trying to compare two things at meron kang words na nakikita sa sentence mo na like or as, uh, that's going to be simili. Your metaphor, there's no words like or as. So for example, you say she is an angel. Okay, she's an angel. She's my angel. And so that would be letter B. Wala pong like or as for metaphor. For simile, you have the terms like or as. Irony naman, of course, uh, you are putting together words that are opposite in meaning. For example, you say there's deafening silence. Okay, so deafening siya, pero silence. Wala ka namang nanilinig. Hyperbole, of course, this is pagmamalabes. Okay, so this is exaggeration. For example, you say, I cried a river when he left me. Okay, so that's letter C, hyperbole. But of course, the correct answer here would be letter D. Again, letter D po. Uh, that's simile. Okay, so letter D is the correct answer for number seven. What about number eight? Upon which is the claim that there is no single universal standard to be used to judge any culture based? Is it letter A, culture shock? Letter B, cultural diversity? Letter C, ethical relativism? Or letter D, cultural relativism? Okay. Sandali lamang po. Tinitingnan ko. Binabasa ko yung sinabi ni Pastor. Tulad ng Gurung Pinoy, niloob talaga dito. Hindi ito accident. Ah, okay. Maraming salamat, Sir Efren. Pastor Efren Esteban. Maraming salamat po. Okay, now again, number eight, upon which is the claim that there is no single universal standard to be used to judge any culture based? Ano ito? Okay, so many of you are answering letter D sa ating YouTube. What about on Facebook? What's your answer for number eight? Okay, YouTube, uh, they're answering letter D. Dito sa Facebook natin, karamihan your answer is letter B. Okay, letter B, cultural diversity, yung kanilang uh, sagot sa ating Facebook. And of course, the correct answer here would be cultural relativism. Okay, so sabi eh, there is no single universal standard to be used to judge any culture base. So hindi mo po pwedeng sabihin na mas tama itong isang kultura kaysa another culture. Hindi mo po pwedeng sabihin na mali itong isang bagay na to dahil depende nga sa ating kultura. Okay, let's take a look at our slide. This is cultural relativism. Cultural relativism is the view that all beliefs, customs, and ethics are relative to the individual within his own social context. In other words, right and wrong are culture-specific, depende po sa kultura. What is considered moral in one society may be considered immoral in another. And since no universal standard of morality exists, no one has the right to judge another society's custom. So that means you have no right to judge another person's culture because depending sa kultura mo kasi, depending sa society mo. Okay, so for example, in our picture here, you see a girl who's wearing a two-piece and nakakover lamang eh, of course, uh, those parts of the body that were covered by the two-piece suit and of course, yung kanyang mata. Ito naman, of course, ang ating mga sisters na Muslim, no? especially when I was in Saudi Arabia, I'd always be uh, seeing people who, seeing women who are dressed like this, they're wearing their abaya, and of course, they're wearing their hijab. No? So, uh, mata lamang nila yung nakikita. So, sabi ng, uh, ng nakatupis dito no? sa, sa isip niya, everything covered but her eyes. What a cruel male-dominated culture. So, para sa kanya, eh, male-dominated yung kultura, no? yung, uh, yung male yung, yung dominant sa kanyang kultura dahil gusto nilang itago, no? gusto nilang i-restrict yung, yung female. Sabi naman ng female dito na naka, nakaabaya nga, nakahijab, yung, yung Muslim sister natin, nothing covered but her eyes. What a cruel male-dominated culture. So, actually, pareho lang yung sinasabi nila. No? So, depende sa interpretation nga dahil depende 
hindi sa inyong kultura. So again, cultural relativism says one man's meat is another man's poison. Kung ano yung yung maganda sa isang kultura, eh sometimes hindi siya maganda, hindi siya accepted, uh, tabu siya sa another culture. So depende po sa ating kultura, depende po sa, sa ating society. So we have no reason, we have no right to judge another culture, okay? So, for example, sa ating mga mga kapatid na Muslim, no, sa mga lalaki, po pwede silang mag-asawa hanggang apat, no, basta na na matututustusan nila, no, kaya nilang buhayin, eh, po pwede nilang gawin yon. But, of course, in Christianity, no, in in um, some religion, hindi siya po pwede. Dapat, eh, uh, monogamy lamang, okay? So, dapat, eh, monogamist ka, stick to one ka. Okay, now, yung, yung ethical relativism naman, this is a moral theory that holds that individuals must decide what is ethical based on their own feelings as to what is right or wrong. There are no universal ethical rules. So again, this one naman is talking about ethics. So sabi ng ethical relativism mo, yung ethics ng tao, the, the thinking that something is right or wrong is still based on the person's belief. Okay, so there's no universal ethical rules. That's according to your ethical relativism. And of course, moral relativism, this is also very similar to your cultural relativism, ethical relativism. It states that values are determined by the society we grow up in, and there are no universal values. So again, there is no, um, we have no right to judge. Bawal nga yung judgmental. Whatever is true, whatever is good, whatever is accepted in one's culture, in one society, that is right for them. So wala tayong right na mag-judge kung hindi pareho yung, yung kanilang belief, yung kanilang kultura sa atin. All we need to do is to accept people for being different. no So in, in, embrace lamang natin ang ating cultural diversity, ethical diversity, moral diversity. Iba-iba yung morality natin, iba-iba yung ethics natin, ang beliefs natin, as so which is right or wrong. okay So all you need to do is to accept people, be tolerant. okay So accept people. All right? So that is moral relativism. But of course, the answer that we have there is cultural relativism. Relativism. Cultural relativism po yung ating tamang sagot. Okay, now we go to number nine. The event that implicated the three Gomborza priests, which resulted in their execution, was the, was it the Cavite Mutiny, letter B, Ilocos Rebellion, letter C, Baco or uh, Massacre, or letter D, Cry of Pugadlawin. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for question number nine? All right, people and YouTube are answering letter A. Okay, sabi ni Sir Ardi Canulo, wala tayong right na mag-judge kung hindi tayo judge. Sir Ferdinand Molina, good evening po, habol po. Nasa number nine po tayo. Okay, those of you who have just tuned in, we welcome you to Gurung Pinoy. Especially if this is your first time to watch up, uh, watch us, so welcome po to Gurung Pinoy. Make sure that you follow all our social media accounts. And of course, make sure that you go back to all our YouTube uh, videos later. No, we already have, um, the last time I checked, no, kanina, when I checked, we already have fi uh, 55 videos. Meron na po tayong 55 videos in our live stream. So lahat po ng discussion for our Prof. Ed and Gen Ed, Nandun na po sa ating playlist, that's already 55 videos sa ating live stream for Gen Ed and Profit. Okay, so again, many of you are answering letter A. Mam Pam Pam, maraming salamat for sharing our video and for starting a watch party. The correct answer, of course, here would be letter A. That's Cavite Mutiny. Okay, let's take a look at our slides. Now, this is Cavite Mutiny, January 20, 1872, about... 200 Filipino soldiers and dock workers of Cavite under the leadership of Sergeant La Madrid mutinied and killed their Spanish officers. Okay, so nag-aklas sila, yung 200 Filipino soldiers, pinatay nila yung kanilang mga officers na, na Espanyol. Si Fathers Jose Burgos, Mariano Gomez, and Asinto Zamora were accused of treason to Spain and tried in an unfair trial. So sinabi na sila yung nagpasimuno. No? They were sentenced to death by Garote on February 17th, 
1872 in Bagumbayan. That's, of course, uh, the now Luneta. Okay, Luneta part na yan. Okay, so again, sila yung inimplicate, sila yung sinabi na uh, nag-umpisa ng, ng mutiny. But of course, we know that this is not true. Now, of course, we have to remember that the killing of Gumburza also uh, awakened the, the, the spirit of Dr. Jose Rizal, no, na magsulat nga. Dr. Jose Rizal, if I'm not mistaken, he, he was still very young when this happened. Okay, so bata pa si Jose Rizal nang, nang mangyari ito. But of course, dahil nga sa pangyayaring ito, no, dahil pinatay yung gumbulsa, kaawa-awa, no, walang awang pinatay, no, pinugutan sila ng ulo. Uh, hindi naman napatunayan na sila talaga yung nag, nag, nag um, orchestrate ng mutiny, ay napukaw nga yung damdamin ni Dr. Jose Rizal. And of course, that created in him his nationalism, his spirit of of being a nationalist. Okay, so dahil doon, eh, uh, nagsulat siya later on in his uh, in his um, later years. Okay, so again, that's Cavite Mutiny. Um, Basi Revolt naman, this is your Ilocos Revolt or Ilocos Revolution. Basi or Basi. Your, uh, the cause of this was the wine monopoly of 1786. The Ilocanos were prohibited to drink homemade basi. Is it basi or basi? Okay, this is wine fermented from sugar cane. So pinagwawalan silang makainom ng basi. They were compelled to buy wine from government stores. Dahil sabi ng gobyerno sa kanila, kailangan e eh, bumili talaga kayo ng alak galing sa amin. Bawal yung gumagawa kayo ng sarili nyong alak. And so what happens is that the, Ilo the Ilocanos rose in arms in the of Basi, the rebellion spread to neighboring towns of Badoc and Santo Domingo. On September 28, 1807, the Alcalde Mayor, together with a strong force, attacked the rebels in San Ildefonso and the revolt was quelled. Okay, so hindi sila naging matagumpay. But of course, yung uh, punot dulo po nito was the wine monopoly. Gusto ng gobyerno na bumili talaga sila ng wine from the government stores at hindi sila gumawa ng sarili nilang wine galing sa tubo. Okay, so that's Basi Revolt. Now, the last one that we have here, the cry of Pugadlawin. This was on August 23rd, 1896. The Katiponeros tore their cedulas as a symbol of protest. Okay, so that's the cry of Pugadlawin. Let's take a look at our slide. The first cry of Pugadlawin is a turning point in Philippine history on account of the Spaniards' premature discovery of the secret society, yung KKK. Andres Bonifacio gathered these men for a meeting at Kangkong on August 21, 1896, suspecting that the Spanish authority might have intercepted one of the invitation letters to the Katiponeros sent out by Emilio Jacinto. Bonifacio changed the venue the next day to Pugadlawin in Sitio Bahay Toro, a jurisdiction of Balintawak. So Pugadlawin is already part of Balintawak. More and more people joined the Katipuneros here, the momentous period in Philippine history, the first cry of Pugadlawin, sometimes also referred to as cry of Balintawak. So pareho lang po yung cry of Pugadlawin and cry of Balintawak took place. Bonifacio asked his men to tear their sidulas to signify their determination to fight to the end. Okay, so dun po nila um, pinunit yung kanilang mga sedula. Okay, so again, that's the cry of Pugadlawin, also known as the cry of Balintawak. But of course, our answer for this question was Cavite Mutiny. So Cavite Mutiny po yung nag-implicate sa ating gumburza priests. And of course, they were sentenced to death. Okay, so the correct answer, of course, would be Cavite Mutiny. Now we go to number 10. This is math. What's your answer for number 10? On a certain day, three computer technicians take turns in manning a 24-hour internet shop. The number of hours Cesar, Bert, and Danny were on duty was in the ratio, a ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 3, respectively. The shop owner pays them 40 pesos per hour. How much would Danny or Danny receive for the day? Okay, so again, this is category math. Your choices are there, 230 pesos, 160 pesos, letter C, 480 pesos, letter D, 980 pesos. What's your answer for question number 10? All right, now, again, sa atin po mga first timers, we are having this live stream, 7.30 p.m. PH time for our general education on Saturday night. And of course, Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. still, 
we have our professional education live stream discussion. Now, the questions, these have already been, been given to our students. Nabigay na po ito sa kanila through our quizzes. Now, for you to be able to join the quizzes, all you need to do is, of course, you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you follow all our social media accounts, you go to our Facebook page, that's Gurung Pinoy. Hanapin niyo po yung ating logo, no? So, punta po kayo sa ating Facebook page na Gurung Pinoy. Meron pong instructions doon. Meron na po tayong total of four Gen Ed and Prof Ed questions, each with 200 plus students, no? So, yung ating section four, eh, meron pa lamang po 57, if I'm not mistaken, 57 students. So, marami pang pwede i-accommodate sa ating section four. So, all you need to do is to join the Google Classroom. Kailangan niyo po yung inyong Gmail, Gmail account, Google account. And of course, once you have joined the Google Classroom, I need to update my quizzes classroom. And then whenever I post the quiz, you would see the quizzes there. All you need to do is to click on the link and diretso na po yan sa ating quizzes. And then you can answer the quizzes. Now, the, the tests are posted there on Saturday at 7 a.m. PH time. So 7 a.m. po. Philippine time, eh, makikita nyo na on Saturday, ang ating quizzes for Gen Ed and Prof Ed, po pwede na po kayong sumagot, no? Yung Gen Ed natin is until 7pm lamang on Saturday because of course we are discussing it at 7.30pm. Yung Prof Ed po pwede nyo po po siyang sagutan until 7pm on Sunday because of course our discussion is at 7.30pm on Sunday, okay? So again, that's all you need to do. It is Libre or Gen Ed Prof Ed Google Classrooms and of course the quizzes for you to answer, it is Libre. We also will have our membership for Grow. Men po tayong Grow. Uh, all the details can be found at the beginning of this video. You can also find that in your um, on our Facebook page. We also have our All In. It's 850 pesos for Gen Ed, Prof Ed, plus your majorship. But for now, the majorship that we're offering are just Bio, okay, Biology, Social Science, English, and Math. Okay, so welcome po sa Guru Pinoy, and I hope that you learn a lot by watching us. Okay, so again, number 10 dito, this is math. Okay. On a certain day, three computer technicians take turns in manning a 24-hour internet shop. Punta natin yung ating next slide. But of course, the correct answer here would be letter C. 480 is the correct answer for number 10. 480. Bakit naging 480? So again, ito po yung ating question dito. No? So meron kang isang internet shop na 24-hour bukas siya. Na meron siyang tatlong workers, si Cesar, si Bert, at si Danny. Yung duty nila ay naka-ratio. So 1 is to 2 is to 3. Yan yung ratio na kanilang duty. So, sa kada oras na nag-duty sila, binabayaran sila 40, okay? 40 pesos per hour. How much would Danny receive for the day? Now, the first thing that we need to do is to divide the total number of hours by the total ratio that we have. So, we add the ratio first. We add natin tong 1 is to 2 is to 3. By adding that, that's 1 plus 2 plus 3, we know that the total ratio would be 6, okay? So that's the total ratio, kinuha natin yan by adding the ratio that we have here. Now, the next step that you do is you divide the total number of hours by the ratio para makuha natin yung kada parte. So what we do is we divide 24 by 6. Again, sa natin kinuha yung 24, that's the total number of hours. Yung 6, nakuha natin ito sa sum ng ating ratio, okay? So we divide 24 by 6. That gives us 4. Okay, so 4 po. That means kada parte ay may apat. Okay, so what we do now is yung kada ratio natin dito, multiply natin by 4. Okay, so multiply natin by 4. So that means si Cesar, na 1 lamang yung kanyang ratio, we multiply that by 4. That means Cesar would, would uh, be on duty for 4 hours. Si Bert, my 2 ratio siya. So 2 times 4, that would give you 8 hours. And si Daniel man, my 3. So that's 3 times 4, giving us 2. 12 hours. Okay, so for you to check whether our answer, our hours are correct, you can also add them. So 4 plus 8, that would be 12, plus another 12, that gives us a total of 24. So that means tama itong ating ratio. Okay, so 4 hours kay Cesar, 8 hours kay Bert, and 12 hours kay Danny. Now, sabi ng last part ng question mo, sa kada oras na uh, naka-duty sila, binabayaran sila ng 40 pesos. Okay, and then our question is about Danny. So, magkano yung nare-receive ni Danny for a day? So, that means we multiply 12 hours here na oras na binabantay ni Danny yung internet shop by 40. So, that means 12 times 40, that's why our answer is 480.
Okay, so 480 ang tamang sagot. Okay, so 480 po yung ating answer for this question. Okay, now we go to number 11. This is still math. And this is very similar to the previous question. What's your answer for number 11? Those of you have already answered this through our quizzes. Oh, okay, now, all right, now many people on YouTube are answering letter B. Servine the Tiles. Nakachamba sa hula. Okay, so karamihan ng mga tao dito sa YouTube natin, your answer is letter B. Uh, sabi ni Sir Boy at Masanggi dito sa Facebook, pag actual board exam, manghuhula na lang ang makatama dyan. Dahil lang oras kasi, time consuming. Now, one tip that I can give you when you are taking your uh, when you are taking your um, your let, no? Pag kumuha kayo ng let, umpisahan nyo dun sa mga madadaling items, okay? Do not start with the hard items. You will be given, if it's um, the, the gen ed and the profit, you are going to be given your your examination at 8.30, no? Sa 8.30, magsisimula yan. Meron pang prayer, meron pang mga reminders yung proctor nyo. By 6.30 a.m., dapat eh, nandiyan na kayo sa inyong testing center. Bawal pong malate, no? Sasaraduan na po yung, yung, yung classroom, no? So that's going to be closed. Hindi na po kayo papapasukin. Make sure that you have all your paraphernalia with you, no? Yung, especially yung noa nyo, yung pencil nyo, yung black pen nyo. Kailangan nyo po yan to write your name sa meron pa kasing questionnaire na uh, pinapa-fill in. Okay? So, bibigay muna yung mga instructions. You'll be asked to fill in your questionnaire. And, uh, bibigay na yung inyong gen ed. So, unang-una, gen ed, set A, set B, set A, set B, no? So, alternate yung pagbibigay. So, it is also very important that you take a look at the set, whether set A ka or set B ka. And then, of course, you need to shade that. Okay? So, shade mo sa inyong answer sheet whether set A ba yung sinagutan mo or set B. Dahil, of course, yung set A and set B, they have uh, the different arrangement na sequence ng, ng items mo ay iba, no? Magkaiba yung sequence ng numbers nila. Now, if you think that you are going to have a difficult time trying to remember some formulas that you have, no? Maaring sa major mo, for example, pag math major ka, maraming formula, or gen ed, and you are, you are trying to memorize all the formula that you have uh, that you think you are going to use in answering the math questions in your gen ed, once you have received your gen ed questionnaire, po pwede nyo pong isulat dyan lahat ng formulas or whatever notes that you want to, to write on it. So po pwede nyo pong sulatan yung inyong, yung, yung inyong questionnaire. Okay, so yung questionnaire nyo, sulatan nyo po yan. And then of course, you try to scan the questions magsimula po kayo dun sa mga questions, sigurado kayong tama ang inyong, inyong answer, okay? But of course, please don't forget to go back to those questions that you've skipped. Pag meron kang question na naskipan, balikan nyo po. Huwag, huwag nyo hayaang meron kayong blank. Dahil of course, the machine is going to, to check your answer sheet. And so sometimes magkakamali yung machine kasi tinitrace lamang niya yung, yung marka ng lead mo, ng inyong pencil. So sometimes, eh, yung, pag naskip mo yung number five, for example, the machine would think that your answer for number six is the answer for number five, okay? Dahil walang lead mark doon sa number five, okay? So, again, be very careful. Dapat eh wala kang naskipan. Dapat eh sakto lang yung pag-shade mo. Uh, pag-shade mo. I'm not sure in March 2021, it might be... Uh, it might be online, so po pwedeng online siya, no? Um, we're not sure if it's fixed na. If it's online, then you might not be able to, you might, you don't have to shade, no? So click, click na lang kayo. But again, still, please do start with the, the easy items, but please make sure that you go back to those items that you've skipped. All right, number 11, the ratio of the number of carabaos, goats, and cows in the farm is 5 is to 1 is to 10. So we are given the ratio there. If there are 48 animals of these kinds in this backyard, how many of them are goats? Okay, so again, the same 
the same process po tayo. You add up the ratio that you have. That's 5 plus 1 plus 10, giving us 16. Then you, of course, divide 48 here, total number of animals by 16, so that you can get each part. And then you, all you need to do is to multiply. We're looking for the goats here. Okay, so goats we nahanap natin. Parabao is 5, goats 1, and cows 10. The correct answer here, of course, would be letter B. That's 3. Okay, so letter B po, 3. That's the correct answer for number 11. Now, this is our process. So again, you add your, your ratio. That's 5 plus 1 plus 10, giving you 16. Then you divide the total number there, 48 divided by 16, giving us 3 for each part. Okay, so carabao natin, that's 5 times 3, giving you 15. Your goat is 1 times 3, giving you 3. Then for your cow, that's 10 times 3, giving you 30. So your question again, how many of them are goats? And so the correct answer, our answer was 3. Okay, so 3 po yung tamang sagot dito. Okay, so number uh, 11, that's letter B, 3. Okay, we go to number 12. If a picture frame is 27 centimeters long and 18 centimeters wide, what is the ratio of its length to its width? What's your answer for number 12? All right, again, we would like to welcome all our first timers. Welcome po sa Guru Pinoy. I hope that you learn while watching us. Again, if you'd want to um, join our quizzes and answer our quizzes, then you can do that by visiting our Facebook page. Tignan niyo po doon yung ating instructions. Okay, number 12, a lot of you are answering letter B, first timer here. Okay, so that's Kim Mix TV. Welcome po sa ating YouTube channel. Okay, now again, you are given the following, no? 27 centimeters yung length, 18 centimeters yung width niya. What is the ratio of its length to its width? And the correct answer here, of course, would be letter B, 3 is to 2. Okay, so 3, to, three is to 2 po yung tamang sagot dito. That's letter B. Let's take a look at our slide. So again, you are given the length to be 27 centimeters and the width is 18 centimeters. For you to get the simplest form for this, we need to divide, divide your numerator and your denominator by their GCF. That's the greatest common factor. When you say factors, these are the numbers that you use or these are the numbers that you multiply to get that certain product. So we know that the factors of 27, of course, aside from 1 times 27 is 3 times 9. Okay, the factors of 18, aside from 1 times 18, you have 2 times 9 and 3 times 6. Now looking at the different factors that we have here, yung common factors nila would be 3 and 9. Now which is greater? Of course, that would be 9. So we know that 9 is their GCF. Okay, so 9 po is the GCF of our greatest common factor between 27 and 18. So what we do next is we divide both 27 and 18 by their GCF, which is 9. So 27 divided by 9, that's 3. 18 divided by 9, that's 2. That's why we have 3 is to 2, okay? If you are going to convert this into your mixed number, of course, that is going to be 1 and 1 half. Paano mo nakuha yung 1 and 1 half? You simply divide 3 by 2. Okay, so there's 1. And the remainder of 1 becomes a numerator. The denominator, of course, is your divisor. Okay, so that's 1 and 1 half. But of course, your answer is 3 is to 2 because we are looking at your ratio. Okay, so 3 is to 2 is the correct answer for uh, question number 12. Okay, that was number 12. All right, now we go to 13. What is the probability of getting a multiple of 3 when a die is tossed? Okay, what's your answer for number 13? Welcome back, Sir Migs, sa YouTube. Matagal na hindi nakabalik si Sir Migs. Busy yata si Sir Migs. Uh, sobrang busy, sabi ni Sir Migs. Uh, sabi ni Sir Jeffrey Arida dito sa ating YouTube, eh, may dalawang nag-dislike. 
pinabantayan talaga ni Sir Jeffrey yung likes and dislikes. Mali lang po yung pindot yata nila. Okay, make sure that you are clicking the like button, the thumbs up po, hindi yung thumbs down. Meron din namang sadya talaga, Sir Jeffrey, no? Meron talaga kasing bashers. Okay, okay lang po yan. Okay, yung question dito, uh, dai po ba yan, ma'am, or dice? Tama po yan, dai. Dai po is singular form for our dice. Okay, so tama po yung die na term. Because uh, that means there's only one when a die is tossed. Ma'am Sai Francisco, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Ma'am JV Umali, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Kaka-out lang niya sa word. Buti nakahabol. Habol po kayo. Pag meron pong mga nakaligtaan, e balikan po later. Okay, the answer here on Facebook is letter B. Okay, now dito sa YouTube. Okay, letter B then. Karamihan. Okay, so again, what is the probability of getting a multiple of three when a die is tossed? The correct answer here is letter C, one-third. Letter C po yung ating sagot dito, one-third. Let's take a look at our next slide for our uh, computation. Okay, so what is the probability? Again, your question is what is the probability of getting a multiple of three when a die is tossed? Okay, now you need to remember all these things when whenever you are dealing with a probability question, no? Maaring nasa gen ed nyo, meron ganito. Maaring din, uh, of course, a 100% math majors, meron kayo makikita ganito. If uh, your question says one die, that means the total number of possibilities is six. Ito po yung gagamitin yung denominator whenever you are dividing um, the possibilities there, no? the, the events over your possibilities. That's six if you only have one die. If there's two dice, okay, may paris ka na ng dice, your total number of possibilities will be 36. Okay, so 36 po yan. That's six times six, kaya naging 36. If your probability uh, question is talking about a deck of cards, that would be a total number of possibilities mo would be 52. Okay, this is an edge para dun sa mga nagtutong its, no? Alam na alam to ng mga nagtutong its. Okay, so alam nyo na merong 52. Hindi kasama yung joker. Pag sinabi ng question nyo na kasama yung joker, of course, the total number will be 54 dahil kalimitan po meron tayong dalawang jokers, no? Okay, so 54. Uh, minsan naman eh, sinasabi nila, sinasabi kong ilang jokers yung meron. Pag sinabing deck of cards, um, only considering the red cards, then you know that that should be just half of your 52. So that's going to be 26. Okay, so 26 lamang pag red cards lamang, pag uh, black cards lamang, 26. That's, that's going to be your denominator. Pag sinabing diamond or heart, or club or spade, now you know that there's only going to be 13 cards, no? That's from ace, galing alas, hanggang king. So meron kang tracing cards, okay? So you need to know the different denominators that you are going to use in your probability. So again, if isang die lamang, that's six. Two dice, that's going to be 36. Deck of cards, that's 52. Red cards, that's only going to be 26. Black cards, that's 26. Spade, heart, diamond lamang, that's only going to be 13. Okay, so dapat alam nyo po yan, no? Especially pag tayo ay nagtutong its. Minsan, paminsan-minsan ako ay nagtutong its. Okay? Uh, marunong pa akong magsugal, no? Yung marunong ako ng lahat ng klase ng sugal. Uh, maliban lamang yung panggingi. Hindi ko alam kung alam nyo yung panggingi, yung, yung pang matanda na cards, no? Kasi eh, uh, you might not agree with it, but when I was very young, I was trained by my father. So yung father ko, dinadala po ako sa sugalan, tapos training niya ako. No? Kasi sabi, paniniwala ng father ko, if you don't know uh, sugal, kung hindi ka marunong magsugal, eh hindi ka magiging wais. So yung mga marunong daw magsugal, eh wais. And uh, for myself, no, uh, considering all my experiences in life, I would think that it is true. Naging wais nga ako dahil tinuruan ako magsugal. So, marunong ako magmadyong, marunong ako magtong it. Pero hindi naman ako parokyano. Hindi naman ako pumupunta sa, ano tawag dito? Sa casino, no? So, usually, hindi, hindi, 
hindi madalas. Minsan, eh, nagkakayayaan dito yung mga teachers pag walang ginagawa, no, tong it's tong it's kami, dulyar yung, yung bayad. But of course, it is only as pastime. Pastime lang, katuwaan lang. Okay, so again, dapat, eh, alam nyo to, pag nagtutong it's kayo, eh, alam nyo to, wow, marunong mag-poker si Sir Loreto Agbayani. And so, sabi ng tatay ko, uh, pag nagsusugal ka daw, marunong ka sa cards, marunong ka sa madyong nagiging wais ka. Wais ka. Okay? So, I would agree with him. Medyo naging wais nga ako dahil tinuruan niya ako magsugal, no? Basta wag lang malulong. Wag lang, wag lang seryosohin yung pagsusugal. Okay, so again, going back to your question here, what is the probability of getting a multiple of three when a die is tossed? Now, your question here is multiple. Now, magkaiba po yung ating multiple tsaka factors. Sinabi natin kanina, yung factors, these are the numbers that you use to multiply so that you can get a certain product. Yung multiple mo naman, ito yung answer mo by multiplying the different factors that you have. And so, for your number three, dahil sabi dito, multiple of three. If you have a number three, no, yung number mo is three, the multiples of this would be three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, and so on. Okay, so these are the multiples of three. Now, sabi ng question mo, what is the total or what is the probability of getting a multiple of three? Now, ano nga ba yung multiple of three dito na makikita natin sa ating die? If there is only one die, no, that's three and six. Wala naman ng nine sa ating die, no? Wala nang 9, walang 12, walang 15. We only have until 6 dots sa yung die. So that means meron kang 1, 2 possibilities. So, so 2 possibilities, that means your fraction now is going to be 2 over 6. Saan ang galing yung 2? You have 2 possibilities. And saan ang galing yung 6? You have 6 total number of events. No? Total number of possibilities mo would be 6. Dahil nga you only have 1 die, sabi natin dito, your number of possibilities, total number of possibilities would be 6. So yan yung ginamit natin denominator. And so you have 2 over 6 or 2 6. Now for us to get the, the simplest form for this, we divide both of them by their GCF, the greatest common factor. And we know that the GCF of 2 and 6 is just 2. So 2 divided by 2 that would give us 1, 6 divided by 2, that would give us 3. And so the final answer is 1 third. Kaya po 1 third ang ating final answer. Now, marahil, mar marami sa inyong mali dahil uh, imbis na multiple, yung hinanap nyo ay factors. Okay? Pag factors of 3 kasi, meron tayong 1 and 3 and yun lang naman, no? Uh, factors of 3, dalawa lang din naman, okay? So, dapat po, eh, tingnan nyo. Pag sinabi ng multiple, those are the the products na that you have. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. These are the multiples of 3. Okay, so again, your final answer would be one-third. One-third for question number 13. Now we go to number 14. This is still, uh, it's not really math. Okay, so po pwede siyang logic. Oh, may pa, sabi ni Ma'am Lizelle Crispo, nako, may advantage pa lang pagiging sugarol. I have a math uh, teacher here na friend, kasama ko siya sa, sa Manning High School. As sinabi nga niya sa akin, when she was studying, palagi daw, nung, nung nagsasady siya, no, nung, nung estudyante pa lamang siya, palagi siyang mali sa probability dahil hindi siya nagsusugal. So hindi niya alam yung deck of cards. So may advantage. Uh, ano na? Hala, balat ng kalabasa talaga. Ano yung balat ng kalabasa? Anong inang pinag-uusapan ng team YouTube? Oh, mamaylin. Humuhugot. Marunong din akong sumugal. Sumugal sa maling tao. May humuhugot, ha? Sakla pag may burol, sabi ni Sir Migs. Aba, si Ma'am Maylene Pontilla, so takot na daw siyang magsugal. Magsugal sa maling tao. Ma'am Fad, no, Sir Fad Kalim, good evening, newbie daw siya. Welcome nyo naman si Sir Fad. Very nice po ang learning po dito. Welcome po. 
Oh, sabi ni Sir Jeffrey Arida, behave kayo guys. Marami tayong first timers. Sir Oliver Mohar on YouTube, mamatagal na po ako nagda-download ng mga videos niyo since July pa po. Marami na po ako natutunan. Maraming salamat po Sir Oliver. Just continue learning and studying po. Good evening Sir Mark Toledo. Ang kailan nakabalik? Saan ka nang galing? Sir Mark, welcome back. Sabi ni Ma'am Anali, marunong naman daw siya lahat ng lahat ng sugal pero di siya magaling mag-solve sa math. Para namang imposible yan, ma'am. Okay, so again, welcome po sa lahat ng ating newbies. Nandito, meron din tayo sa Facebook ko, oh, Ma'am Lael, Lube, Ma'am Ba, or Sir. Maraming salamat po. Welcome po sa Gurong Pinoy. Loading ang signal ni Ma'am Mylene Dehon. Balikan na lamang po daw niya. Okay, now, going back to our question here, question number 14. Okay, during a summer, a lady boss visits Bora every six days and his best friend, or her her best friend to dapat, every four days. If they visited Bora last April 11th, what was the earliest date both of them visit Bora? Again, the correct answer here would be letter A. That's April 23rd. Okay, so letter A po yung tamang sagot dito. Oh, so Ma'am Lyle Loob, Ma'am pala si Ma'am Lyle. Hello po, welcome po. First timer. Okay, so that's letter A, April 23rd. Let's take a look at our um, calculations there. No? Paano natin sinol? Okay, so they visited Bora last April 11. Yung lady boss, kada apat na araw, bumabalik siya sa Bora. Yung friend naman niya, kada anim na araw. Okay, uh, yung lady boss pala is kada anim na araw. Yung friend naman niya, kada apat na araw. So this is the friend. Okay, the purple friend, and this is the lady boss. Okay, so sabi ng, sabi ng ating question dito, the lady boss would visit every six days while the friend would visit it every four days. Okay, so uh, pagkatapos ng apat na araw from April 11, no, para sa friend, no, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, April 15th, nasa bora na naman siya. 1, 2, 3, 4, April 19th, nasa bora na naman siya. 1, 2, 3, 4, yung friend ay nasa bora na naman on April 23rd. Now, yung lady boss, we need to count six days, okay? So, dahil every six days nasa, nasa bora siya. So, from April 11, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, nasa bora siya by April 17th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, nasa bora siya by April 23rd. And so, yan po yung ating sagot. Together sila ng April 23rd sa bora. Okay, so April 23, that's the correct answer. You can also use your number line. Pwede nyo ding gawing number line. So, count, count lamang kayo no? using your number line. But of course, you also need to remember na yung April natin would only have 30 days. No? Pag sumobra kasi, pag kailangan mo sobra pa ng days dyan, dapat e alam mo na 30 days lamang yung April. Okay, so April 23, that's the correct answer for question number 14. Now we go to question number 15. This is still math. Find the volume of a rectangular solid with dimensions of 3 feet, 2 and a half feet, and 8 inches. What's your answer for question number 15? We're almost done. Okay, after this, we still have, we only have five, five questions. Aba. Loko to si, si Ma'am Christine on YouTube. Welcome po sa mga first-timers. Ang pinakamatanda po namin dito ay si Sir Jeff at si Sir Rolando. Oh, si Ma'am April Joy Estioco. First-timer din. Welcome po, Ma'am April Joy. Wow, maraming salamat, Sir Ramil, Hans Quambot. Sabi ni Sir Ramil, oh, I love how you teach, ma'am. Siguro po, napaka, napakagaling niyo po mag-teach. Maraming salamat. Uh, tandaan niyo to ha, pag naibigay na sa inyo yung hiling niyo maging LPT, huwag niyong pahirapan yung inyong estudyante. Okay? Uh, always make it a point na 
madali sa inyong estudyante. Marami kasing ibang teachers na hindi pinapadali yung mga bagay sa estudyante, no? pinapahirapan yung mga estudyante. Uh, lalo na sa universities, no? nung college tayo, sabi ng yung thinking ng teacher mo, eh, hindi nga ako nakakuha ng uno sa sa subject na to, when I was a student, ikaw, bibigyan ko ng uno, okay? Ako, I'll be very happy if all of my students get uh, an A plus na, na grade. Okay, so pag nakuha niyo na yung inyong LPT, dapat eh, maibalik niyo din yung tulong sa inyong estudyante. Padaliin niyo lahat ng lesson sa inyong estudyante. Hindi naman padaliin na sobrang dali na pag grade 1 na yung tinuturo niyo. What I mean is, um, find all ways that you can para mas madali siyang maintindihan ng inyong estudyante. Huwag niyo po silang pahirapan. Okay, so again, we welcome, we'd like to welcome all our first-timers. Welcome po sa Gurong Pinoy. Again, we have our live stream 7.30 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. So we hope this is not going to be your last, especially if you are preparing for your let. We are going to become very instrumental and we are going to do everything that we can to help you pass the let. Okay, so kapit lamang po kayo kahit mahina yung signal, okay, kahit maraming distractions. Okay, so um, always go back po to Guru Pinoy Study Link. And if you can, please go to our Facebook page. Nandun po lahat ng updates namin. And of course, we'd also like to welcome all of you if you can join us in our Christmas party. Last time po, we had our acquaintance party. But now, of course, we're looking forward to our Christmas party that's going to be on December 20th. Okay, so magkakaroon po tayo ng Christmas party and we can all see each other. We are going to do it through Zoom. So uh, we would really be very happy if you can join us. Okay, nasa Facebook page po natin, may event po tayo doon. And all you need to do is to comment join para po mailagay ko kayo sa ating groups, okay, sa ating teams. All right, now we go to um, question number 15. The correct answer here would be letter B. Okay, so letter B po, that's 8,640 cubic inches. Now, let's take a look at our calculation. Sabi ng 15 mo, find the volume of a rectangular solid with dimensions of 3 feet, 2 and a half feet, and 8 inches. Now, uh, in our choices, we were given inches. So that means we need to convert all the inches values here or the inch, uh, the feet values here to inches. Now, we know that 1 foot would be 12 inches. Now, sa isang ruler natin, 1 foot siya, may 12 inches siya. And so what we do is we convert all the feet here first. Okay, so the first one that we have is 3 feet. We multiply that by 12 inches. And so we get 36 inches, okay? Now, the second value that we have is 2 and a half feet, or that's 2.5 feet. And we also multi multiply that by 12. So 2.5 times 12, that will give us 30 inches. So now we all have all the values in inches. We have 36 inches, 30 inches, and 8 inches. Now, remember to get the volume. All you need to do is to multiply the length times width and the height. Okay, so 36 times 30 times 8, that would give us 8,640 cubic inches. So that's why that is the correct answer. Okay, so that's the correct answer, letter B, 8,640 cubic inches. That is the correct answer that we have. Okay, the number 16. This is science. When the stem of vines grow around poles of fences, what kind of response is exhibited? Is it letter A, hydrotropism, letter B, phototropism, letter C, thigmotropism, or letter D, geotropism? Uh, sabi ni Ma'am Fatma dito, Ma'am Fatma di Pantar, maraming salamat po for sharing our video. Sabi niya sa Facebook, ako yata ang pinakamatanda dito kaysa yung mga binanggit nila sa team YouTube. Okay, so sabi ni Ma'am Fatma, baka siya yung pinakamatanda. Sir Noel Hazareno on Facebook. Good evening, ma'am. Honestly po, hirap po talaga ako sa math. Thanks for watch. Uh, thanks po watching from Nueva Vizcaya. Welcome po, Sir Noel. Ako din dati, hirap din ako sa math. Uh, when I was in elementary, nasa elementary ako, sobrang hirap din ako sa math. Sa math kasi kailangan mo talagang very important tool in math, no? Pag meron kayong babies, meron kayong mga bata, napaka-importante yung ipamemorize yung multiplication table talaga sa kanila, no? Once ma-memorize yung multiplication table kasi medyo madali na lahat sa math. Okay? When I was very young, nung nasa elementary ako, eh, hirap din ako sa math, no? So, 
palagi palagi akong uh, pinapagalitan ng tatay ko. Yung tatay ko kasi nagtuturo sa akin, palagi niya akong pinapagalitan kasi pag pag sinoob niya, parang ang dali naman. Tapos isasabi, "Ah, oh, okay, gets ko na." Ang dali lang naman pala. Tapos sasabihin ng tatay ko, "Oh, sige. Ikaw na." Tapos eh hindi ko na alam no kung paano ko isolve yung tatay ko kasi napakatalino ng tatay ko. He was a valedictorian sa elementary niya, high school niya no, hanggang sa college niya no. So always top siya. Ako kasi eh hindi ko alam, medyo bulakbol din ako no, but uh, of course I'm also I would say I'm also smart and I I like all the subjects pero minsan tinatamad ako no, medyo tamad ako minsan. Okay, when when I was a student Okay, so medyo kasi pag minsan, pag tinitingnan natin yung isang tao na nagsosolve ng math, parang napakadali. So, sasabihin ko sa tatay ko, oh, ah, kaya ko na yan, napakadali. Tapos isasabihin ng tatay ko, oh, ikaw na. Tapos hindi ko na alam kung paano isolve. Yung math kasi, it's a subject that you need to embrace first, you need to enjoy it first bago mo siya mabilis na matutunan. No? So, kailangan i-enjoy mo muna yung math. I usually say math is a teacher teacher dependent no na, na subject pag magaling kasi magturo yung teacher mo sa math eh uh, you'd enjoy it no meron kasing ibang math teacher na hindi hindi step by step yung pagtuturo so hindi mo alam saan nanggaling yung yung number na to so kung nanggaling ba siya sa, saan siya kinuha no so hindi siya pinapaliwanag so minsan eh um meron ka ng math fright pag nakita mo yung yung numbers karamihan sa pinoy no pag nakita natin yung numbers eh takot na tayo because we did not learn to we did not have a chance to embrace math and to enjoy math pero pag na enjoy niyo yung, yung math nagiging madali na lamang siya okay so again that would be number 16 mo when the stem of vines grow around poles of fences what kind of response is exhibited hydrotropism phototropism thigmotropism and geotropism the correct answer here would be letter c that's thigmotropism this is the response to touch no the re response to touch though now let's take a look at our slide here Whenever you say tropism in science, this means a plant's response to a stimulus. So, meron kang iba-ibang klaseng tropism. You have your hydrotropism, which is the plant's response to water. Your phototropism is the, the plant's response to sunlight. Geotropism is the plant's response to gravity. Sometimes it's also called gravitropism. Sometimes gravitropism din ito. And of course, you have stigmatropism, which is the plant's response to touch. Now, your, your GIF here is showing you, yung clip art natin dito, this is showing you the three different types of tropisms, yung hydro, phototropism, and geotropism. As you can see, your roots here would grow towards the water, would grow towards gravity. That would be hydrotropism and geotropism. Again, geotropism is also called gravitropism, as in gravity. Now, your stem, your leaves, your flowers would usually, okay, this would usually respond to light. They would usually respond to light, and we call that phototropism. Phototropism naman yung response to light. So all these three, the, the first three, can be shown in our clip art here. Ang thigmotropism mo naman, this is the plant's response to touch. This is, of course, exhibited here in our clip art, in our GIF, by your... Uh, mimosa podica. Okay, this is your mimosa podica. That's a scientific name for makahiya. Okay, so response to touch. Parang ikaw, nung kinakanti ka niya, eh, uh, nagpapakipot ka, no? So that's stigmotropism, the, 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 the plant's response to touch. So your answer there was stigmotropism whenever the plant would be in contact with... Um, in contact with, with the pole, no? They would easily bend. Okay, so that's still thigmotropism. So that was our answer for this item. Now we go to number 17. This is uh, social studies. This Filipino trait would have been a beautiful one if it had not been denuded of nobility by joining the bandwagon of corrupt officials and politicians. Letter A, Magalang. Letter B, Masinop. Letter C, Masunurin. Or letter D, Pakikisama. Watching from Pakistan. Oy, Ma Mylene, ha? Nagjo-joke ka. Akala ko totoo na. Watching from Pakistan. Ah. 
Uh, sabi ni Ma'am Tina Cabo dito sa YouTube, yung papa ko dati, pinalo ako ng unan, yon nakabisado ko bigla multiplication table. Talaga nga naman, no? tayo, no? hinahampas tayo para matuto. Uh, sabi ni Pastor Efren, no? yes ma'am, balik-balik o bisita lang po sa Guru Pinoy pag LPT na, yes. Of course, balikan nyo yung Guru Pinoy pag LPT na kayo, malapit na. Uh, sabi ni Sir Roland sa YouTube, talagang dapat hinahampas ka daw, Ma'am Pin. Sir Pin siyata to. Okay, so again, this is number 17. This Filipino trait would have been a beautiful one if it had not been denuded of nobility by joining the bandwagon of corrupt po uh, officials and politicians. We know uh, this, no? Alam na, alam natin ito. What's your answer? Karamihan dito sa ating team Facebook. Their answer is letter D. Sir Nakayama Isuke, I will be telling Sir Migs po regarding your ebook later. Si Sir uh, Charito din yata, hindi pa natatanggap. Okay, now the correct answer here of course would be letter D, pakikisama. No? Dahil meron tayong pakikisamang tinatawag, meron din tayong tinatawag na utang na loob. Kaya minsan ay nagiging hadlang siya para magserbisyo na mabuti yung ating mga Opisyal, di ba? Sinabi nga ni Vico Soto, eh wala po kayong utang na loob sa inyong gobyerno dahil yung politicians na nagbibigay ng ayuda sa inyo, yung politicians na nagbibigay ng tulong, hindi po nila pera yan. Uh, that's their their duty as a government to help the people, no? Para po servisyohan yung kanilang, uh, yung kanilang, ano tawag dito? Yung kanilang mga... Yung kanilang mga nasasakupan. Okay? So, hindi po kayo dapat na magkaroon ng utang na loob sa kanila. Hindi po po pwedeng, ay, tinulungan ako nito, binigyan ako ng magni mayor, so dapat, eh, iboboto ko na siya pag uh, tumakbo siya ulit, no? So, hindi po ganyan. Dahil, of course, that is their duty to to serve their constituents. Dapat nga, yung totoong public service, ikaw yung nagsaservisyo, hindi yung ikaw yung siniservisyohan. Okay? So, that's letter D, pakikisama. Alam nyo, dito sa Amerika, hindi ganyan yung kultura nila. Yung sa atin, no, pag, pag fiesta, si mayor, eh, nandyan. At pagkatapos, eh, uh, bibigyan talaga ng masat ng pagkain. Si mayor, yung salad, ilalabas para lamang kay mayor, di ba, no? Ganyan tayo mag-treat sa ating politician para silang mga hari, reyna, para silang mga Diyos. Dito sa Amerika, hindi. Walang mga, walang mga security guard yung mga politician dito. Yung politician, hindi pinapansin. No? Minsan, eh, meron kami mga meeting or meron kami mga gathering sa school district. Pumupunta yung mga senator nila, yung mga congressmen nila. No? Walang mga governor, walang sumasalubong, naglalagay ng mga corsage or whatever. No? Tsaka may, may guardia, may security guard. If, pauupuin yung dito wala nakaupo lang siya siya yung sarili nagde-drive ng sasakyan niya no and dapat on time pag nag-program no walang walang special treatment dahil of course yung yung isip nila dito yung thinking nila siya dapat yung nagsi-serve sa kanyang sa kanyang mga constituents hindi dapat yung siya yung sini-serve okay sir mix maraming salamat po for your ayuda thank you so much and welcome back sir mix Sa atin pang ibang mga parokyano, kakabalik lamang, medyo na busy, no? Sir Mark, uh, welcome back. And sali po kayo sa ating Christmas party. Okay, so again, this is letter D, pakikisama, that's the correct answer. Now, we go to number 18, we're almost done. Paraan ng pagbuo ng salita na ginagamitan ng tatlong uri ng panlapi. Remember, you have your three types of panlapi. When you say panlapi, ito yung inyong mga affixes, no? So, meron kang... Uh, unlapi na nakikita sa unahan ng inyong yung word, meron kang gitlapi na sa gitna ng word, and of course you have your hulapi na sa hulihan ng inyong salita. Now of course we cannot choose hulapi and unlapi, hindi na po ito yung ating magiging answer. Dahil sabi ng ating tanong, ginagamitan ng tatlong uri ng panlapi. Wala rin tayong kabilaan. And so you know that the correct answer here would be 
letter B. Letter B po, laguhan is the correct answer. Letter B, laguhan po ang tamang sagot for question number 18. Okay? So again, meron tayong tatlong paraan sa pagbubuo ng salita, paglalapi, ginagamitan ng unlapi, gitlapi, or hulapi. Meron din tayong pag-uulit ng salitang ugat, no? For example, you say sabay-sabay, ganti-ganti, okay? Um, uto-uto. Meron din tayong number three, pagtatambal ng mga salita. For example, you say dapit hapon. Okay? So bahag hari. Okay. So these are the three ways through which we can form our words in Filipino. But of course, the correct answer there was laguhan. Laguhan. Okay, now we go to the second to the last question. Very easy. Alin sa mga sumusunod na malalalim na salita ang may magkasalungat na pare? So we're looking for magkasalungat. That means uh, antonyms. Okay, it, it, is it tambuli, trompeta, maigupo, matalo, tagapukaw, tagagising, mapanlait, mapagkandili? What's your answer for number 19? Aba, Mamaylin, grabe talaga pinagdadaanan ni Mamaylin. Grabe yung mga hugot niya. May paraan din ba para sa pagbubuo ng puso na wasak, Mamek? Oh, hugot si Mamaylin, ha? Okay, so again, going back to our topic of the Christmas party, puntahan nyo po mamaya sa ating Facebook page yung ating event, nakapost po doon, and then um, uh, mag-reply mag po kayo doon, mag-comment po kayo sa ating discussion, mag-comment po kayo ng join, okay? Don't, and my, my basis for forming the teams is not only the the joining, no? hindi, hindi yung pag-press nyo ng, ng going, pero yung pag-comment pag nyo po ng join doon. So mag-comment po kayo ng join doon, Para po mailagay ko kayo sa grupo at of course you will be able to join the different uh, the different contests that we have. So again, we have your Christmas carol or Christmas choral. Then of course we also have your Once Upon a Christmas storytelling sketcha and of course we have your Mass Christmas. And of course uh, the last one would be the raffle draw. Okay? Aba, si, ayan si Sir Mark, oh, mamaylin. Sabi ni Sir Mark, dito lang ako, ma'am. Aayusin ko ang nawasak mong puso. Mm -hmm. Palipad hangin, ha? Sana all, aayusin wasak na puso, mamaylin. Galawang Mark Toledo, nagbabalik. <laughs> Sabi ni Ma'am Christine, ayan, may love team na ulit. Oh, nagkaka-love team. Sabi ko, na, sabi ko nga sa inyo, di ba? Sa Gurong Pinoy, my forever. Tanong nyo kay Ma'am Tin, nasa na yung ano mo? But hindi na nag nagre-review yon Ma'am Tin. Mamaylin Dehon, thank you po for tagging your friends. Sir Robert Sehas, welcome back po. Thanks Mamek for the learning here from Pozorubio, Pangasinan. That's from Ma'am Annalisa Ramos. Maraming salamat po. Okay, so again, number 19, very easy. The correct answer here, of course, would be letter D, mapanlait at mapagkandili. Okay, they're opposites, they're antonyms. Okay, so that's your answer for number 19, that's letter D. Now we go to the last question. Okay, last question. Alin sa mga sumusunod ang pangusap na may paksa? Now, on grow, eh, hindi ko na iisa-isahin yung mga pangusap natin na walang paksa dahil nakapost na po ito sa grow. Uh, pero yung hinahanap natin sa number 20 ay ang pangusap na may paksa. Meron siyang uh, subject. Meron siyang simuno. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for question number 20? This is already the last item that we have. So again, if this is your first time to watch us or if you are one of our parokyanos, balik po kayo tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. for our prof and discussion. If you still have not answered our quizzes, if you're still not a member of our Google Classroom, all you need to do is to go to our Facebook page. May link po doon para sa ating section 4. Mag-join po kayo sa ating Google Classroom using your Google account. Then of course, um, I have to update my quizzes classroom and then you can already answer your your prof ed there so kada 7 a.m po ng sabado i am posting your gen ed and prof ed on fridays i'm also posting your fun quiz no sample quiz para po ma-check nyo na hindi kayo makaka problema for your 7 a.m the quizzes for gen ed and prof ed. okay so again tomorrow night we are going back for uh we're coming back for your 7 30 p.m pa rin po prof ed discussion so still, you have uh, you still have a chance to complete your prof ed. So balikan nyo lamang po sa inyong Google Classroom. Okay, your answer here is letter D. Karamihan sa YouTube, your answer is letter D. 
And dito din sa Facebook, your answer is letter D. Of course, that would be the correct answer. Nagbabasit sila sa aklatan. Okay, Ma'am Sai Francisco, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. For having a watch party. All right, so that ends tonight's discussion of our general education. Abangan niyo po yung ating top notchers. So again, tomorrow night, we are coming back for our professional education discussion. And of course, we are still going to do this until the day you take the let. Now, Saturday, Sunday, again, 7.30 p.m., we are having our live streams. And of course, ang ating pong uh, majorship is going to start on it might be the third week of december okay third week of december but of course don't forget to join our christmas party on december 20th okay nakapost na po yan as an event sa ating uh, guru pinoy facebook page all right that ends tonight's discussion and of course we end our discussion with our closing prayer this is still of course prepared to us or for us by pastor efren esteban okay uh pastor efren's also uh, his Facebook uh, Facebook is also very important, also very helpful, especially for those people who want to listen to the readings in the Bible, to, to listen to the learnings that you also can get from the Bible. Manood po kayo lagi ng live stream din ni Pastor Efren Esteban. Okay, so we'll have the closing prayer. Again, this is still prepared by Pastor Efren. Maraming salamat po. Please join us in our closing prayer. Panginoon, salamat po muli sa isang makabuluhan na pagtalakay, pag-aaral sa sandaling ito. Sana po ay natuto po ang bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon. Salamat sa tulong ni Ma'am Mek uh, para sa amin, Panginoong Diyos. At sana po ay uh, patuloy po kaming tulungan. Malapit na po ang exam, Panginoon. At tumingi po kami ng wisdom, ng knowledge para po sa pagsusulit po na ito. Panginoon, gabay na po kami sa aming uh, paghihiwalay ngayon, sa aming pamamahinga, sa aming pagtulog, na po ay kapayan po ang bawat isa sa amin. Pagpalain po ang aming kalusugan, ang aming mga hanap buhay, ang aming mga pamilya, Panginoong Diyos. Sinusuko po namin ang lahat sa inyo, lahat ng aming mga alalahanin, mga problema, Panginoon, uh, tulungan po ang bawat isa. Salamat po sa Panginoong Jesus, maging po ang tulong ng banal na Espiritu sa aming buhay. Ikaw po ang siyang maitaas at makilala sa lahat ng mga ginagawa po namin, Panginoon. Nawa po ay mapakinggan mo ang mga panalangin po namin na ito na sama-sama sa pangalan ni Kristo Jesus naming Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. Amen. Amen. So again, maraming salamat, Pastor, for always preparing our closing and opening prayers. All right, so again, stand by po for our top notchers for our general education for tonight. No? So I'll be posting that in Guru Pinoy's official Facebook page. And also, if you're a member of GROW, you can also find all the materials that we've just discussed on GROW in a few minutes. All right, so sa muli po, we'll see each other again tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. for our professional education discussion. Go back to your Google Classroom and answer your prof ed if you still haven't done so. Okay, now this is again Coach Mac of Gurung Pinoy na nagsasabing malit manabutil ng mga kaalaman. Ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat po. Good night. And I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye.